Hi everyone, my name is Cynthia. Let's talk books. And lately I've been filming in my office. So uh, my apologies for the squeakiness. It's just my chair. It is what it is. <laughs> um, all right, let's, let's just start talking about the books that I read in uh, September uh, because that's what you are all here for. So the very first book that I finished in September was... Jackie Lau's Ice Cream Lover. And let me tell you how much this book just really <laughs> hit the spot. Like at the time, it was just the perfect thing to pick up. A light, um, socially conscious, but like just fun book. I have a dedicated review um, of this book, so I'll link it down below for anybody that's interested. I'll limit what I say here and just say that it was a fantastic romance and a really wonderful. So um, now I know that I really like uh, Jack Lau's writing, so I will continue um, reading her books. She's got a bunch of fun uh, holiday romances um, and someone pointed, like directed me to them on Amazon. So I am so glad to have found them. The next book that I finished in September was What It Means When a Man Falls From the Sky by Leslie Neka Arima. And this is a work of short stories all dealing with the like child-parent relationship. Um, and it was just every short story in this collection is super hard hitting and really makes you think and reflect about those kinds of relationships in your life, or at least they did for me. And it was such like each story carried so much power that like I don't, I don't even know if I'm fully equipped to talk about this book yet, other than to highly, highly recommend it, um, especially if you are interested in short stories and interested especially in those kind of just really hard hitting emotional stories. Um, yeah, I don't know how else to describe this book other than like, my God, like as I was reading, I was in awe of the themes that they engaged with and how it engaged with it in the short story format, in the writing. The writing is exquisite. Like there are books, like even for people like me, like I'm a historian, right? I'm not a literature professor or an English professor. So um, I don't, that's not my approach to books. But some books just scream like genius. <laughs> like the way you use words is genius. And this was one of them. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the next book that I finished in September was Silver Born by Patricia Briggs. This is um, part of the Mercy Thompson series. And I'm checking to see what book it is. This is book number five in the Mercy Thompson series. I am just, I'm loving the Mercy Thompson series. In this series, you're following um, uh, a woman who uh, has supernatural powers. Uh, she's involved in a bit of a will they, won't they, where, with a werewolf. At times with two werewolves. Um, and one of her best friends is a deadly vampire. And uh, her former boss is a fae. <laughs> if you, okay, urban fantasy, supernatural romances, if you're into that, this is, uh, this is the book. This is the book for you. Uh, so I just, I just really, uh, I've really been enjoying this, these Mercy Thompson books. And, and they're also like surprisingly like heartfelt and powerful. Um, yeah, I can't say much more without revealing anything. I just really enjoy them. <laughs> the next book that I finished in uh, September is Paula Santiago in the River of Tears by Taylor K. Mejia. So this is a middle grade book. It's part of the Rick Riordan Percent series and it's taking a Latinx um, young girl and her group of friends. She's best friends with, with a boy and a girl and um, there have been young kids disappearing near the lake. Her mom has cautioned her to not go anywhere near this lake because this is where La Llorona hangs out. They haven't been listening. They go hang out at the lake. One of her friends disappears and then she and her other friend must go out and look for her friend. Um, I, I really love it. Paola Santiago is a character who believes in science. She, not, she does not believe, believe in folklore. She doesn't believe in La Llorona, in El Cucuy, in El Chupacabras. And then it turns out it is all real. 
<laughs> it's a it's a delightful story what did i give it did i give it three three point five out of uh, five stars um i just i really enjoyed it and um i'm so glad that i picked it up the, uh, so, and that was, by the way, one of the first books that I finished for Latinxathon um, and just Latinx Heritage Month. I'm also counting it towards Latinx Book Bingo. I'm just doubling and tripling and quadrupling up wherever I can. <laughs> the next book that I finished is the group read for the Latinx Takeover. This is the book that Latinxathon and Latinx Book Bingo chose as the group read for the month. Um, it is By Any Means Necessary by Candace Montgomery. And let me tell you, I had seen the cover to this book around, but uh, it, was, it was just kind of marginally in my periphery. Um, so I'm so glad they picked it up. I, I that they picked it for the group read because otherwise I might not have picked it up and it's just, it's a really good book. You're following a college freshman. This is his very first semester at college and the day he's moving into the dorms, he gets a call that he's about to lose um, his bee farm back in LA due to gentrification. And students struggling with the same thing Tori struggles with here, you know, starting a new life, having made it to college and starting that life while still feeling the tug of family responsibility and like the responsibility to your neighborhood um, and to the people that helped, helped you out throughout and, um, you know, feeling like you owe them something, but also wanting to move forward and to do something, something else with your life. Um, and I just found this really powerful. Um, I think I saw Kassin comment that this is a very voice-driven book, and I think she's absolutely right. Um, it wasn't for her, um, I think, and um, it just was for me. You can tell really right away if you're going to be into it or not, uh, because the same kind of voice and writing that you see at the beginning, it's, it holds up throughout the book. And I just, I, I just found it to be really excellent um, throughout the whole book. And I was so scared um, thinking like that things were not going to go well for Tori. Um, he is um, queer. And so he's also <laughs> not just dealing with gentrification, uh, family responsibilities, the responsibilities of starting college, but then also the relationship and friendship issues. And I just like, I just wanted him to be okay. Um, and I'm not going to tell you what happens, but um, it was a satisfactory ending for me. So let me know if you've read it down below, uh, because I, I really want to hear what other people um, think about this book, because I, I really thought it was fantastic. The next book that I finished in September was Adriana Herrera's American Fairy Tale. So this is book number two in the American Dreamer series. And this just reminded me of why I loved American Dreamer so much. Um, it's been long enough since I read American Dreamer that I don't remember like all the details of that book, but I really enjoyed it and loved, loved this one. Adriana Herrera is a writer that you go to if you want social justice themes in your romance. Like this is what I'm getting from her. Just all of her romances have strong themes of social justice. I'm gonna get through the rest of the American Dreamer series and do a dedicated review on everything I've read from, from Herrera because she she is the kind of romance writer that I currently need in my life. Um, in here, the themes that she touches on are also themes of gentrification, um, themes of um, survivors of sexual um, sexual abuse, survivors of domestic violence. Uh, one of our main characters works in a center for domestic abuse victims. Uh, the other main character is a billionaire and is donating money so that this center can offer more services to um, to um, their popul to their community. I usually do not go for the billionaire trope. Like I just hate it because I'm like billionaires. Ugh. Like you, can, somebody with a ton of money comes in and solves all the problems, which yeah, like that'd be nice, but like billionaires are usually not that nice. <laughs> but Adriana Herrera makes it work. Um, and I think it could have really fallen into some traps because the billionaire is funding a project that the love interest works in. 
So there was a lot of uh, uh, power dynamics that could have gone wrong there, but Adriana Herrera addresses that from the very beginning. She addresses the issue of these are funky power dynamics and we're gonna set them straight from the beginning. Um, our um, non-billionaire main character, Camilo, Camilo, who is not the billionaire in the relationship, makes sure that the, our, the billionaire hero knows what's up and is not taking advantage of the fact that he um, has all this money, like that, that, you know, the power dynamics in the relationship are quite balanced despite the income disparity is what I'm saying. Um, there's also a lot of just straight consent um, in here. Um, yeah, like just just a lot. And I think because of the power dynamics, Herrera was just really careful about that throughout. I also have to say that Herrera herself works. She's a therapist for victims of domestic violence. And so um, that is one of the reasons why I think that theme keeps coming up in romance novels. Um, her characters are also um, Afro-Latino and that is the case um, here. We have um, an Afro-Latino character, a, a, a white Dominican character, and so she engages with the topic of identity and what that means uh, for people of different skin tones for people of different nationalities and I just I loved it you have to though I think in order to like American fairy tale and it seems like a lot of Herrera's books is you have to be into social justice themes if you're not there these books are just not gonna be for you um, but I personally really enjoy American fairy tale next book that I finished in uh, September was for my uh, book club. I was going to say in-person book club, but th these are not in-person anymore. Uh, but it was The Rosie Project uh, by Gray Simison. And this, so, <laughs> this was an interesting book. Um, you're following a main character who's a genetics professor who studies autism, the genetics of autism. In addition, it appears that he's on the spectrum and is not aware of it. He is aware though of how bad he is at reading social cues and he works on it. Because he's hyper aware of these things, there's a lot of comedy in the in this book and it's the comedy that like got to me, like it just spoke to me and I ended up really, really enjoying this book. Um, he's working on a wife project and he comes up with a questionnaire of questions uh, that I, he thinks will help him find the person out there that is meant he's meant to be with, right? Because he thinks statistically there's someone out there for everyone, so let me find my person. And, but because of the way his brain works, he develops this questionnaire. <laughs> Uh, hijinks ensue and um, I had a fun with the book. Now I don't know about the autism representation like I uh, I just don't know and so uh, one of the things that I am going to do is I'm going to look at Own Voices reviews uh, and um, check what they say about the autism representation because I just like I, I feel ill-equipped to even have an opinion on that so I would urge you to do the same um, if you're interested in this book. And the next book that I finished in September was Fantasy and Death by J.D. Robb. This is a part of the In Death series by J.D. Robb in this book number 30. So I'm getting there. I'm getting there, guys. I slowly work on these. I really enjoy them. And so they become kind of comfort food for me. Um, this one I really enjoyed. I really enjoyed these series because of the interpersonal relationships and you know the kind of mystery of the week in each of this. Um, for those of you that don't know the In Death series follows um, a New York cop in the near future and she um, is a homicide detect lieutenant and you see her solve problems. She is married to a bajillionaire and that actually helps her solve problems. But a lot of times you're seeing her interactions with her husband, you're seeing her interactions with her, um, f the friends she's making as she's on the force. And um, I really just enjoy it. <laughs> if you're reading the In Death series, let me know down below um, and, let me, and tell me where you're at in the series.
All right, the last book that I finished in uh, September was Miss Me Dear by Taylor K. Mejia and Anna Marie McLemore. Um, if you missed it, I just posted a dedicated review to this book because it was freaking fantastic. It's delightful. This book has great Latinx representation. It has queer representation. It's just everything I needed out of the books I'm reading in the Latinx Heritage Month. And, um, it just delivered. It delivered. If you are interested in more or more of what I have to say about that book, uh, check out my dedicated review pad. Um, those were the books that I finished in September. There was a book I DNF'd. I almost never DNF books, but um, life's too short to read books that I'm not into, so I, I had to do it. And I DNF'd uh, Manny Marable's Malcolm X, A Life of Reinvention. So this is a biography that I'm reading alongside reading the autobiography of Malcolm X, which I'm buddy reading with a bunch of really awesome people. Can't wait to tell you about the buddy read. Um, but I DNF'd uh, the biography because I felt like it was rehashing a lot of the stuff that was happening in the autobiography. It tries to correct some of the things that uh, Manning feels Malcolm X exaggerated or, or Haley actually exaggerated um, or was not fully truthful about and um, it was just not adding to my enjoyment uh, of the autobiography and I felt like um, the question of, uh, of homosexuality and whether or not Malcolm X engaged in any um, same-sex sexual relationships was not handled well in here like it felt I felt like queer baiting the way it was coming up and I wasn't into it. Um, there are good things here. I think Maribel handles the historical context of the time period really well and that that is what the value of this book is. Um, but I was just not enjoying it so I'm DNFing it and I might, I'm gonna keep the book like I'm not gonna get rid of it uh, for reference and maybe to like um, go back in and read some of the chapters about that go beyond what the autobiography is um, but it's it's not a book I'm recommending I guess <laughs> um, but so it might be for some of you some of you might might be really interested in it so that's why I'm still mentioning it like it wasn't for me but I'm not getting rid of it I'm keeping it as a reference book and I don't think it was horrible at all it was just in the moment I'm just not into it right now um, I used to do a book of, uh, or a video on what I'm currently reading because my reading's been all over the place. It's It's been a lot like my mood because I'm a mood reader and my mood has just been all over the place. I have some really great days, um, some not so great mental health days and some really terrible days. So um, I really, if you've made it to the end of the video, tell me how you're doing down below. Like just, like we should all be checking in with one another. How are you doing? How are you holding up? Um, it feels like everything around the world is falling to pieces and our, the feeling, those feelings are valid and, and I think that one of the things that the internet allows us to do is to connect with one another, check in and say, hey, did you have a bad week like I just did because this is a terrible week <laughs> and what are you doing to stay on top of it? I am trying to force myself to have moments of relaxation, moments in which I don't worry about the to-do list, uh, working out, I hate working out, but it helps my mental health, so I am trying to force myself to do it. Um, so tell me how you're doing, and give me a cute emoji. Yeah, I wanna see some cute emojis if you made it to the very, very end. <laughs> All right, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.